Good afternoon and welcome back to the Gunmetal Speedster YouTube channel. Now, today's video, we're going to be doing something a little interesting. Uh, I didn't really get anything good for Black Friday, nor did I go out shopping and looking for anything good. Um, but when I was at Walmart, just kind of browsing around, I did find one of these. Now, uh, the backup camera is something I've always wanted uh, in the Camaro, and mine's a 2010. Even though it's fully loaded, it is the 2SS. Um, it didn't come with my link because that came in a later model, which is a little annoying. Um, so I'm missing out on cool features like the reverse camera and the HUD and everything else. Um, and having a backup camera is obviously useful for my land yacht because I can't see out of it when I go to backup. Uh, the sensors do a pretty good job. They start beeping way before I get close to anything though. So it makes, it makes it seem like I'm going to hit something way before I, way before I actually am. So that can sometimes, uh, not really be beneficial when I'm parking. Um, so we pick this up. I found this at Walmart. This is a hundred bucks. Uh, as you can see, it has a wireless digital backup camera, no hard wiring installed, and installs in minutes. It's made by Whistler. Um, I don't know. I The one reason I never really wanted to get a, uh, a backup camera, or the reason I haven't got a backup camera, rather, is because I didn't want to have to wire it all the way through the car, and then I didn't have a screen for it to uh, display on, because uh, you know I don't have like a big MyLink touchscreen or anything like that. It's just the standard head unit that's in the, uh, the Camaros here um, for 2010. Uh, now that comes with a little like four inch monitor and because you don't have to wire it into the um, the backup lights or whatever that way it because most of them they only turn on when you put the car in reverse this one hypothetically I'm thinking should be on all the time and basically the video shows people just turning the monitor on when they want to see they need to back up which is kind of cool if I'm driving down the road or whatever and someone's tailgate me I can only like you know turn that on or something like that and uh, see behind me or you know whatever case it may be um, but yeah, so this thing uh, requires a charge of like five hours. It is already charging, so that's good. Um, I'm not going to install, or I'm sorry, I'm not going to show me install it because, like I said, it installs in minutes. Uh, I have to go look over the uh, the instructions, make sure I really know what I'm doing, and I don't really, <laughs> I don't want this video to be super long like the, the previous ones have been. So we'll go ahead and move the Saab. We'll take the license plate off the Camaro, and then uh, I'll do a review for you guys, or at least tell you what my opinions are of it. What it looks like we got uh, two solar panels on either side and the actual camera up there um, I mean I guess it is it's pretty noticeable um, and the installation wasn't very hard at all it was basically there is no wind noise but basically you just adhesive them to the back of the plate uh, they give you um, they call it spacers so uh, it'll basically fit now and uh, yeah, everything is, you know, maybe a half hour total of actually like uh, getting it all connected and everything else. It's not too bad in setting it up. You do have to activate it uh, for the first time you get it, which is on the activation receipt. Um, this is the little monitor they give you. And uh, it is pretty small. And I got to say the video quality isn't all that great, which I mean, why, why would you expect it to be with something that uh, is this cheap? Um, but yeah, basically what happens is for the first time it gets power, it turns the backup camera on for 30 seconds. And then after that, it automatically times out. And uh, to my knowledge, there's no way to extend that duration, um, which is kind of uh, you know irritating because what if you need more than 30 seconds to back up for whatever reason? Um, I don't know what it could be, but I'm sure there is a scenario where you know 30 seconds just isn't enough. Um, and then once it times out and goes off, uh, this thing will auto shut off. And then when that happens, even when you turn it back on, or like a, it, it enters sleep mode rather. And then when you hit the uh, the power button to give it more power for a second, it uh, comes on for a split second, but it doesn't show the, uh, the, the, ca the backup camera's view. It's just a blank screen and it lasts, I think like three seconds and then it goes back into sleep mode. So really after uh, on the initial startup of the car, the camera will enter backup mode for 30 seconds. Um, after that, the only way to get it to enter backup mode again is to turn the, uh, the, the monitor here all the way off by holding down the power button and turn it back on and then it'll it'll simulate it getting power for the first time again and then it'll ask to, for a signal for the backup camera so uh that is a little annoying um i would like that right rather it just go into sleep mode and be getting the signal all the time and then anytime i need to you know check or whatever i can just smack the on button and it'll you know display for 15 seconds or whatever i've read through the owner's manual it doesn't say that there's any way to change this which is a little frustrating um 
So yeah, I'll go ahead and show you guys uh, what exactly it is that it's going to do. We'll go ahead and start the car on. I'm in a parking lot. I've got a telephone pole uh, in front of me, and I don't know how well you're going to be able to see that, but there are some, uh, whatever you call those weird little poles in the back, uh, guarding a fire hydrant. So yeah, we'll go ahead and see if it uh, turns on. Put the car in reverse. Okay, see, and it is on. And then... Uh, with risk to my car, I'm just going to go ahead and try to multitask here. And this is what it's going to look like as we get closer and closer. My car's not beeping yet, but uh. Oh, see, now it's starting to beep. But uh, yeah, so that's basically what it looks like. Now, this should cut out here in just a second, and then I'll show you. Yeah, see, okay, now watch. Now I'm like, oh, okay, I wasn't done parking yet. Take that out. Turn this back on. Nothing. A blank screen for all of three seconds, and then it shuts back off. And there's no way to get that to come back on. Um, so yeah, I don't really understand. But if you hold it down, the power, it'll turn off. Hold down the power again. It should reset the entire thing. And yeah, there you go. We have uh, we have power again. One thing I'm noticing is. This little signal indicator here, it's like what I used to see on a phone from way back in the day. I don't know how well you guys are able to see those little icons at the top, but there's like a thing indicating its service, uh, like how, how well the signal is, and it's got full bars right now. Well, when it turns itself, or when it goes into sleep mode, and then you activate it again to see that weird blank screen, that little bar is just, it's, it's non-existent. And I don't know if that's because it's not given enough time to get the signal, or what it is, but uh, like I said, it, I could see why it would be an inconvenience to some. I think it's a, a silly thing to have. You should be able to adjust those options. Um, but also for a hundred bucks, I mean, what can you expect? Um, if it didn't seem like it was gonna be a hassle to take this entire thing back off and have to basically strip the adhesive off the license plate, I would probably take this back um, because I don't think it's honestly worth a hundred bucks. I mean, for this very simplistic design, it's probably worth, I don't know. I would pay 50 bucks for it. Um, realistically, they could probably charge 80 and still get away with it. Apparently they can charge 100 because people like me will buy it. But at least you guys know now that this is not a product that's probably worth your money. Um, if you're lucky, you have the MyLink uh, radio here where it's got the, the full, like, you know, uh, big touch screen and it has the automatic backup camera and everything else, which is ideal. Um, I do plan on, there's a way that you could, uh, it was a Gen 5 DIY or whatever. Um, they make a, a, a kit that you can install a later model uh, MyLink into this with a backup camera and everything else. Um, so that is a plan that I do want to do for the interior eventually because for one, you know, giant touchscreen looks much better. Um, I don't really need it to have navigation or anything like that, which I think the uh, normal MyLinks do. Um, but just for the simple fact of the backup camera and that it will kind of clean up the interior a little bit. I like the way it looks. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. I appreciate you guys stopping in. Uh, I know uh, it's been a little bit since we've had a Camaro video. We've been dealing with the Saab, and that is because uh, Ohio gets pretty bad winters. Um, so I actually have a car covered. The Camaro is going to be going into uh, hibernation for a little bit, um, just because there's not a whole bunch of quality content that I could put out. Uh, so really, I think the next video you guys will see uh, with the Camaro is probably around Christmas, only because I know I'm getting more modifications to it. Um, so yeah, you guys have to stay uh, tuned and uh, see what those are. I appreciate you guys staying stopping in. Thank you. Uh, if you are stopping in for the first time, you can go ahead and subscribe. Help me out. Go ahead and leave a like, drop a comment. Let me know you guys think of the uh, the Whistler backup camera here. 